Praise the Lord. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Day to all. It is, it, it is indeed a joy and great privilege once again to be here this morning uh, and to minister the Word of God. I want to thank God for His grace and His love and His mercy and His resurrection power. Hallelujah. My friends, Jesus Christ said His words, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world. Isn't that an awesome promise? Is that great and mighty on this resurrection day? We can say that God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is here with us. He says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but no evil shall befall thee, and no plague shall come by thy will. This morning, every spirit of witchcraft and obia and demonic forces and evil are destroyed under the precious blood. For the blood of Jesus is so efficacious and the blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus is repentant that destroys every yoke and every bondage and every fetter and every evil and every work of darkness. And every evil that is set against you, I destroy under the precious blood of Jesus right now. Every blight, I destroy under the precious blood. Every spirit of oppression, depression, frustration, anxiety, I destroy and I break in the name of Jesus. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. Jesus Christ comes, my friends, that we might have life and life more abundantly. But the thief cometh, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Hallelujah. And this morning, over 2,000 years ago, this resurrection day, Jesus Christ raised from the dead. Hallelujah. I'll go more in depth into that this morning, but I want to pray for the sick. Hallelujah. Jesus said on this resurrection day, healing is a children's prayer. And the first uh, covenant he made with man was a covenant of healing. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with the stripes, uh, we are healed. I am healed. You are healed. We are healed. We all here are healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? Isn't that mighty, my friends? We are serving a great and wonderful God. I do not care what sickness you're suffering from this morning. Those of you who are watching me from church, right here in church, in church, in the studio, in church, on the street, in your, in your home, in your living room, in your dining room, in your kitchen, in your car, in your office, on the street with your phone, where are you watching me this morning? I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you. And he said in his words, he is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that is the reason and purpose, my friends and beloved, that Jesus Christ came for 2,000 years ago upon this earth. Because of his great love for mankind. I do not know how long from now the rapture will take place. But Jesus says, come now, let us reason together. Said the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, it shall be white as snow. Though it be like crimson, it shall be as wool. God wants to reason with us this morning, my friends, because he loves Getting back to healing this morning, my friends, Jesus Christ took our sicknesses and pain and disease upon himself. And you can be healed. He's not only the healer of our soul, but he's also the healer of our body. And where whatever sickness you have, I do not care if you have cancer, AIDS, diabetes. If you have a liver problem, a heart problem, a kidney problem, a lungs problem, a blood issue problem. Whatever sickness, if you have a broken rib, a broken arm, you're blind, you're deaf, you're dumb. If you're suffering with depression, oppression, frustration, anxiety, what the case may be, if the doctors have given you up and said you will not live, you will die within a month and take your parents home or your, or your relatives home and feed them, they, do, they will not live. I want to tell you, you will not die, you will live because Jesus Christ has life and life more abundantly and Jesus Christ wants you to live in health and strength and prosperity but the thief coming but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. And this morning we are serving a loving God, he wants you to have life and life eternal, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. I feel a tremendous anointing on this resurrection morning. And I thank God for His grace towards my life. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I will not be standing here this morning. I thank God for His grace and His 
love and his mercy and his great concern towards my soul. Many times I've messed up, but Jesus Christ never gives up on me. He loves me and he loves me and he loves you. He hates our sin, but he loves us. And that is why he died for you and me. Because he knows every day we are battling with sin in the flesh. And he loves us, my friends, and he wants to save us all. And only Jesus Christ is the perfect one, and only he can save you from the works of the devil. Because the devil will try everything to destroy your soul, and to destroy your life, and your future. But only Jesus Christ can help us this morning, because he's awesome, great, and mighty, and because he's your mighty God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is a tremendous amount thing in this studio this morning. Right now, wherever you are, be prepared to receive your healing in Jesus' name. Right now, I'm sending for the anointing. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. This resurrection morning, I see many, many are here this morning. From all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities. I do not have time to call out what I see your sickness this morning. But please write me and text me and let me know what God has done for you. What the loving Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. He has done it on the cross 2,000 years ago. And he's still in the team. He's still in the saving business. He's still in the healing business. He's still in the deliverance business. Because he loves you and me. My friends and beloved, hallelujah. This morning, I'm going to get into the resurrection message. It is Resurrection Sunday. Once again, happy Resurrection Sunday to all who are watching this morning. God bless you richly. You are blessed and highly favored. God loves you with that everlasting love, my friends. You're great, you're mighty, you're awesome, you're wonderful. I want to thank Jesus for who he is this morning. He's awesome, he's great, and he's mighty. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, let us turn to the book of, of Corinthians chapter 15. Corinthians chapter 15 tells us this morning. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak on all the resurrections that the Bible speaks about this morning. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 15. Turn the camera soon. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I want to, to start reading first verse this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 12. It says this now, hallelujah. If Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how, my friends, do some among you say there is no resurrection but a great question of the dead? But my friends, this morning, there is no resurrection of the dead. Then Christ, if, if there is no resurrection of Christ, it's not risen. If Christ is the reason, the reason, risen, risen Lord that we preach, is empty. And our faith is also empty. Yes, we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that the grace of Christ, whom we did not, did not raise up. In fact, uh, the dead do not raise, uh, but the dead do not rise. Uh, then is, if the dead do not rise, then it's is not the Christ. And if, if Christ is not risen, our faith is futile. And you are still in your sins. Hallelujah. I don't know uh, about you, you all this morning. I don't know, but I know I'm not, I'm not still in my sins. And then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Hallelujah. My friends, if this, if this life, in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. And now, my friends, Christ is risen. From the day, hallelujah, and my friends has has become my friends the first fruits, the first fruits of those who are falling asleep. I hear me, beloved, this morning. I hear me. I want to talk to to, to you today for a few moments about the powerful message of the resurrection. I hear my friends and beloved, this morning. Hallelujah, a powerful message of the resurrection. Hallelujah. I say that the powerful message this morning. Hallelujah. The powerful message. Hallelujah. All my friends, I want to say that the word of God is powerful and sharper than, than any two-edged sword this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
This morning, I will give you the word. I will take my time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will take my time and give you the word of the Lord this morning. The Bible speaks about all the resurrection that took place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that you're here this morning. Listening to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I will try to speak slow this morning that you will grab every word. Hallelujah. I'm talking about this message because, my friends, the resurrection. Everything hinges on the resurrection. I says everything hinges on the resurrection. Our lives, hallelujah. Our salvation, our walk with God hinges on the resurrection. Is there no resurrection? If there is no resurrection, the scripture is just a read series of a, a digital resurrection. We still in our sins. The reason we are Christians is because of the resurrection. The resurrection separates Christianity from other religions. The, 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 the resurrection separates Christianity from, from Muslims. From Muslims, from Hindus, from Buddhism, from Christian, from different religions. I follow Jesus, and the reason I follow Jesus is because he did something that nobody else has ever done. He conquered death. Hallelujah. I say he conquered death. Death, all the others are still in the grave. But Jesus Christ got them out of the grave. Hallelujah. Praise God, I hear you this morning. He got up out of the grave. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? He's alive and life forevermore. This is the powerful, this is the power of the resurrection. That is one of that uh, is, uh, is so, so profound and so powerful. It is very significant and very, and very important. However, my friends, in Jesus' days, in Paul's days, he writes to the church in Corinth. There was some a joker there who didn't believe the resurrection. And so Paul, in writing to them, said, Why did somebody, so why did people hang out there? All you see, there is no resurrection. He says, there is a resurrection. If there is no resurrection, you are caught. God don't have the power to raise Jesus up from the dead. Then we are all in trouble. Yeah, and that is true, my friends. But I want to talk to you about the resurrection. Hallelujah. And the meaning of resurrection. Because the Bible has uh, many resurrections in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to list all this morning. And if I have already preached this message, there are times already all of you, my friends, hallelujah, will have to listen. Because it's a resurrection which is preached every year through all the decades. Hallelujah. The resurrection message. There are so many resurrections in the Bible. Hallelujah. What the Bible wants you to, to know today. Hallelujah. My friends, you must learn. We must learn what the Bible has to tell us. We must not be distracted. Hallelujah. You must not get lost in the word. Hallelujah. We have to follow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This message today, hallelujah, because it will not make sense until we get it to the end. You've got to pay attention, hallelujah. So what I want to talk about uh, through the, the rest of all the resurrection that is listed in the Bible. The Bible has one, has a meaning to it. Want uh, to explain all that you need to know this morning. I'm going to give you the verse where we're going to put on the open on. I'm going to give you the verse, my friends, so you can follow it in your Bible this morning. And paraphrase the story about what I want to tell you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God, my friends. Hallelujah. Because after you go home, after the service, you look up at this verse that I've given you every week and you laugh and you know all that you are, my friends, and you know that one day you will be resurrected. I want to encourage you that you will be resurrected. The journey do not give up. One day the trumpet of the Lord will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and those who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord God in the air. Hallelujah. The Bible, that's going to prove to be 
important is in a few moments we will get to the end and see why it's important. I want you to walk through, I want to walk through to all the resurrection this morning. The resurrection in the scripture here, number one. Let's go to it. Hallelujah. First King chapter 17, verse 17. Two twenty-four. First King 17, verse 17 tells us. Two twenty-four this morning. This this the resurrection, therefore. There is a story tells me, tells you the story in the real quick. Hallelujah. I want to tell you the story real quick this morning. Hallelujah. The story of Elijah, the prophet. Who tells the king and the people that because of their sins there will be no rain on earth until God speak the word. And for three and a half years there was no rain. Hallelujah. There was a drought. People, people crop up and they were dying animals. But God sustained Elijah. God sustained Elijah. God sustained the prophet. Him, he drink water by the brook, hallelujah. And the raven brings him bread uh, to eat every day. Do you hear that? You hear that this morning. I say a raven. You've got to tell my friends uh, this is something important this morning. Because a raven is a scavenger. A scavenger shares nothing. The scavenger eats up everything. For itself, but my friends, but God changed the nature of the scavenger, and it's uh, it's a way. Don't uh, shout it. Uh, let me finish. Uh, let me finish this morning. Instead, what God says uh, is of being self-consumed. Uh, the scavenger, the raven, instead of, of acting as a scavenger, instead, my friends, uh, operates in the opposite. The opposite of its nature, and instead of its uh, consuming on itself, uh, it brings the food to the prophet Elijah by the book. Hallelujah! That's important uh, because we serve a God who has the capacity to change, the capacity to change the nature, my friends, of something who is trying to hurt you and cause them to help you. Are you hearing me this morning? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, now you can shout if you give great great. Somebody needs to understand that there is somebody in your life who's trying to hurt you, and God is going to use them to help you instead of hurting you. Hallelujah. Are you hearing this one? So Elijah is by the brook. Elijah by the brook, my friends. By the brook runs dry. Hallelujah. The brook runs dry, and God says to Elijah, I'm going to send you to a place called uh, Zara, Zarephat. And there is a Zarephat in a widow who I have commanded. I have commanded to feed you, my friends. So Elijah the prophet changes nature and goes up to, goes up to the path of Zarephat. And in fact, he does find the widow and with her son. And there, my friends, he said to her, Elijah split her up and says, Fix me a cake, hallelujah. Fix me a cake, Elijah told the woman. <coughs> she says, I only have enough flour and oil. She says, I only have enough oil and flour to make me one meal for me and my son because of this family. And we're going, we're going to die. Hallelujah. And we want to eat the last one and die. Elijah said, fix it for me first. And watch God take care of you and your son. Hallelujah. That's fit. Take care of the man of God and you will be taken care of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here is what happened, my friends. The woman fixed the the, the, the cake for him and then goes after. She fixed the, his cake. She goes and back, uh, she goes back to them to the barrel. She goes back then to the barrel and she does it the same every day. She goes back to the barrel and the jar oil there. Always come minute, my friends. Uh, hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you all what God is doing. Hallelujah. There is always enough there for you. 
but something happens in this journey. How something happens during this time her son dies. Hallelujah. Her son dies, he gets sick. He gets sick and ill and he dies. Hallelujah. The scripture says she told, she told the servant, she told the man of God, she told the prophet, and the prophet prayed for her son. And he just brings back to life. He gets resurrected from the dead. It's like the first miracle of a resurrection in the Bible. I hear you. That's the first miracle. Somebody said that the first resurrection. Hallelujah. There's number two, second Kings chapter four. Hallelujah. Verse 11 tells us, two thirty-seven talks about the Shumanite woman. A Shumanite woman, uh, my friends, and the Bible says that Elijah, hallelujah. Now get this, Elijah, my friends, is a student of uh, e e Elisha. Elisha is a student of Elijah, and he takes he takes like follow the like a J -E, a Elijah. Elijah prophesied to a Shumanite woman uh, that uh, she is going to have a son. And her, her husband go to have, and, and, she, and they want to have a child. And they have been, they didn't have a child. But as she prophesied to her, you're going to conceive and have a son. And she in fact does conceive, has a son. She didn't believe at first, but God, God made it come to pass. She had a son, she had a son and something happened there. Hallelujah. Her son dies and he gets a massive headache and he dies. Hallelujah. He dies from a massive headache. The Bible says that she told the man of God and he, and he, he's, 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 he prays. He prays for a son and he comes back to life. This is it, the second resurrection. Oh, hallelujah. You will hear me this morning. There are number three, my friends. Hallelujah. Kings chapter 30, verses 20 tells us. 221. Second Kings chapter 13 talks about the Moabite and the Moabites are in heaven. They are a bunch of thieves. Anything is in here. Let me see, my friends. The Moabites. Uh, see, nobody raise a hand. You are thief if you pay, if you don't pay your tithes. Hallelujah. Look, uh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're going through uh, the, the, the thievery if you're not paying your tithes. And that's what the, the fools and thievery Robin Hood. Hallelujah. In the gang members. Dies, hallelujah, the mobile, the, one of the mobile gang member dies. Hallelujah. And they, they, they have they have time to fool around with him. They wrap him up and they, they throw him in a cave. They throw him in a cave. They wrap him up and throw him in a cave. And they didn't know the cave that they throw him in. Hallelujah. In the cave, my friends, Elisha. Elisha was buried. In the, in the, the light uh, was buried in the cave. So they disturbed in the cave and was gone. They just threw him and left and went to him. They threw him in the cave. The dead man body touched the bones of Elijah. Hallelujah. And when it touched the bones of Elijah, hallelujah, my friends, the dead man jumped up uh, and come back to life. Hallelujah. Shikana Sante is not awesome. That's the next resurrection. Hallelujah. He comes back to life. Shikanama Sante, now significant resurrection. This is very significant because one, one, Elisha. Elijah and Elisha, who was a servant of Elijah. Elisha was a servant of Elijah. Did you got it? Elijah, while he was following uh, Elisha was just following Elijah, Elijah because he did, he died, the Bible says he was taken away. He asked, he asked Elijah, when you leave before leaving, can you give me a double portion? Can you give me a double portion of your anointing? Elisha asked Elijah. Hallelujah. 
He asked for a double portion from the prophet Elijah. Elijah asked Elijah. Elijah was asked a hard question. Elijah, if you see me when I'm taking away, you have a double portion. So my friends, Elijah continued to follow. He going to follow and take watch. Hallelujah. And stay close to Elijah. And Elijah was taken away. Hallelujah. His mantle fell off and fell on Elisha. Hallelujah. And a double portion come on him. Hallelujah. A double portion came on him. But there was a problem. Elisha performed 60 miracles in his lifetime. Hallelujah. When Elijah died, hallelujah, he had only performed 31. Hallelujah. Short of 32. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So in the grave, my friends, uh, when they show his, the, the man's body, the man's body, I can't get no help there. Can you, can you get him in this morning? Shikadama Sante, did you see how God is powerful? I'm telling you, if God gave you a word that something going to happen, even when you did, even not become a trigger figure to pass. My friends, did you get that? Even in the grave, the last prophecy came true. Here, number four. Number four is the New Testament, Matthew chapter 27, verse 51 tells us. And true 53, Matthew chapter 27 tells us. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 27, it tells us this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. It talks about this profound when Jesus died and was buried. And were rose from the dead. When we had got raised from the dead. When Jesus got raised from the dead. The scripture says. Hallelujah. Also many, many who had fallen asleep and died. Got up out of the grave. And walked my friends the streets. They walked the streets of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. You hear me this morning, you miss a great spot to say amen and shout. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He took some people in. Hallelujah. He took some people out of the grave and they rose from the dead. Hallelujah. And they walk on the streets. Hallelujah. They walk in plain daylight and people saw them and talked to them about the, the fact that Jesus was dead. Hallelujah. And many people saw that he got a, he got grave. He got the grave and he died. Hallelujah. See people walk in the street. They have already died this morning. They saw Uncle John, Uncle James, Uncle Fred walking who have died many years ago, walking on the streets. Hallelujah. And he says, Uncle John, you died many years. What are you doing here? Hallelujah. They were raised from the dead. People got uh, no hope. Uh, they take their people who are walking in our family and in our community who have no hope. Uh, you think uh, on their way to hell, there is no hope for them. But I'm here to tell you this morning, we're serving a God who has the power to bring life to somebody who have lost hope. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name. There are my friends, number five. Hallelujah. Number five is it number five no more. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 7, verse 11 tells us. True 15. Here is number five. Luke 7, verse 11 through 15 tells us. This is the story of a widow who has a son who dies and they are having the funeral procession. To take him to the grave site, and while they were walking this dead boy, her son, her dead son, to the grave site, hallelujah, of where they have gone to bury him, all of a sudden, my friends, Jesus interacts with them and come across Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus stopped the funeral possession and brings the boy back to life, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Did you hear that? Hallelujah. Did you hear that, my friends? Can't shout because it's, my friends, the boy come back to life. Hallelujah. My friend, in the city of Dane, I come back and that means in a moment he 
becomes this happened in the city of Maine. The boy come back to life. Here is number six. Luke chapter 6 verse 8. Number 42 and verse 49 to 56. A synagogue ruler. A ruler of the synagogue named Jairus. Jairus comes to Jesus. Because Jairus, 12-year-old daughter, is on, is on the brink of death. Hallelujah. My friends, she's dying. Jairus' daughter was dying. Come to Jesus. He is a ruler in a synagogue and says, Can, he says, Can you come and pray for my daughter? Jesus agrees to come. My friends, on his way, he gets stopped there and he heals there and he heals people and ministering and doing ministry while he was on his way to Jairus' house. My friends, a messenger comes and says, Jairus' daughter has died, as no need coming anymore. But my friends, Jesus continues to go to the house, hallelujah, and when he gets to the house, he kicks out everybody, he says, please leave, out, go out, and he comes, and he, and he prayed for the girl, and she came back to life, hallelujah. Praise God, that's the next resurrection. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that awesome? I'm grateful this morning that Jesus comes even though everybody else thinks that he is too late. Hallelujah. He is too late. My friends, he is never late. Hallelujah. Jesus is never late. Hallelujah. Think about the circumstances this morning. Jesus never late. No need of reaching out to God, my friends. There today we serve a God who can show up even when we think it's too late. It's never too late for God. Hallelujah. That we saw his number seven in Luke chapter seven. I'm sorry, John chapter 7, verse 11, tells us the 44. John 11, it talks about a man named Lazarus. Lazarus, all of us know the story of Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. Jesus gets a message from Mary and Martha that the disciples whom they love, a sick man named Lazarus. The Bible says that Jesus delayed his coming and by the time Jesus gets there, Hallelujah. Lazarus has died and the Bible says, my friends, that when Jesus gets there, Mary and Martha run to Jesus and said to him, if you have been there, my brother will not have died. Hallelujah. I'm going to, to sorry, look at you, your neighbor and say, sick. Uh, when you say, my friends, uh, hallelujah, I made no sense. Uh, but uh, my friends, uh, hallelujah, we have to stick with the problem. Hallelujah. Our brother, I see, I, I, I read this, my friends, uh, what Jesus says. I find this distracting spirit uh, of the devil trying to rule you in all uh, different directions this morning. A few moments, uh, my friends, uh, what Jesus says, uh, he delayed his coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Jesus is never late for nothing. Jesus is never late for nothing. Hallelujah. Lazarus was dead. Hallelujah. Lazarus got sick and dies. Hallelujah. And by the time Jesus gets there, he has been dead for almost four days. Hallelujah. They said, surely this body has been now in the litter. Jesus said, but my friends, but when Jesus got there, he walks, he walks straight up to the tomb and he says, this Lazarus, he says, Lazarus, come forth. He says, Lazarus, come forth. Somebody say, it's a good news. He said, Lazarus, my friends, because if he didn't say, Lazarus, come forth, all the dead would have raised from the dead. Hallelujah. All would have come forth. My friends, Jesus know what to do. He says, take, unbound him, take off the great clothes. Hallelujah. And he came out alive. He raised back Lazarus to life. 
that resurrection number seven or eight is number eight. It's Acts chapter nine. I'm going to somewhere. I'm almost finished. Acts chapter nine, verse 36 tells us. The 42 talks about the woman named Tibeta. Tibeta is a seamstress. And my friend, she makes clothes. And she makes clothes and she's a good woman. She serves and helps needy people, the poor people. Hallelujah. And she dies. And when she dies, uh, the word came to the Apostle Peter that Tibeta had died. And everyone was sad. And Peter comes and he saw everyone was crying. And he comes and he prayed for her. And she comes back to life. She was resurrected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friends, that's number nine. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 20, verse 7 through 12. Paul says, Paul is preaching in the church. And Acts chapter 20, Paul is preaching. Hallelujah. And the place was packed. The Bible says he preached until midnight. Hallelujah. Paul was preaching and people was up in the balcony. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord, my friends, for Jesus this morning. Thank the Lord for the resurrection power. And Paul was, was having the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. And was Paul was preaching at midnight and suddenly a young man named Satyrus is sitting in the window. He was sitting in the window of the church on the third floor of the building and he fell asleep and he falls out the window. He falls out the window and crashed to the ground and he died. Look at your neighbors this morning. Don't they all fall asleep and try to pass this preaching this morning? Hallelujah. Sorry, I know not everyone does that. You have to be up all night before you're sleeping. Not for listening to the resurrection message this morning. Paul reaches down to where the body lay dead and prays, my friend. He prays for him. Hallelujah. And he comes back to life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you fall asleep on me this morning, don't know that I have some anointing that will bring you back. Hallelujah. Finally, number 10 this morning. Hallelujah. Number 10 tells us. Thank you, Jesus. And I don't want you to turn to, to the first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. I read the verse already, but I want you to read it again. The verse I'm going to have us to read together. First Corinthians chapter 15 this morning to 20. 15, 20 tells us, it says, But thou Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. And has, my friend, become the first fruits, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me this morning? Declares that when, my friend, Jesus rose from the dead. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the, in the first fruits now. Hallelujah. What does that mean this morning? Here's what it means. Hallelujah. See all of these uh, previous nine and resurrections this morning. Accord, the people died and got raised up back to life. But listen to this. Uh, when they died again, when they died again, hallelujah. Did you get that? They were raised from the resurrection, but they died again. But when Jesus rose from the dead, hallelujah. When Jesus rose from the dead, he did not die again. Hallelujah. He did not die again, my friends. Hallelujah. He is alive and alive forevermore. I feel what I want to shout on this right here because he is the first fruits of many. Hallelujah. In other words, my friends, he is the first of many who are going to follow after him. One of these days, all of us are going to follow. That's where we come to. Hallelujah. We don't have to fear dying this morning. Because, my friends, when we die, we're going to get resurrected. Hallelujah. But we ain't going to die again. Did you hear that? We will have eternal life. Give the Lord a big hand this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless us. We will live forever, hallelujah. We are not afraid of death. I am not afraid to die. You must not be afraid of death, my friends. Hallelujah. We will live forever. Jesus is the first fruits of many, and we will be raised again. Hallelujah.
Beloved, we will all be raised again. Hallelujah. The Bible says that dead in Christ shall rise and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord God in the air. Hallelujah. They will be with the Lord forever. Hallelujah. We will be there with the Lord for the seven year marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we will return with Jesus Christ upon this earth to rule and reign with him for a thousand years. I do not want to get into that this morning, but I want to tell you I believe in all of my heart that the coming of the Lord is very near. Are you prepared and ready for that resurrection body happening? Are you ready and prepared to be resurrected with Jesus Christ? He's going to come in the clouds very soon. The trumpet of the Lord will sound. But are you ready? Are you saved? Did you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you know him personally? Are you washing his blood? Do you receive redemption? Are you born again this morning? My friends, if you're not, you need to be this morning. Because very soon, you're going to hear the trumpet of the Son of the Lord. We are going to be part of the first fruit of the resurrection. Where you will live forever. Hallelujah. My friends, it's been a joy and great privilege to be here this morning to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord, the word of God has been a blessing to your heart. Do have a wonderful resurrection Sunday. I'll see you next week. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you, Mishli. You have a great day. I love you in the love of God. God bless you, Mishli.